Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to take a look into the case of Craig Price, who is also known as the Warwick Slasher. Craig Price was a teen serial killer. Yes, you heard it. Teen serial killer. He was a teenager who killed with no remorse. Do you want to know what happened? Do you want to know why he didn't get life in prison for his killing? But first, let's start from the beginning. Craig Chandler Price was born on October 11, 1973 in Warwick, Rhode Island into a working class family. He was called Iron Man. He was described as a good, humored and vivacious boy and he was also a football player. At a really young age, before he even turned 15, Craig Price had already a criminal record which included breaking and entering, robbery, stalking, drug abuse and assault. Craig's criminal activities were something that he shared with some members of his own family. He was also a member of a gang of juvenile delinquents and their criminal activities were of burglarizing houses. So, on July 27, 1987, at the age of just 13, Craig Price broke into the house of a woman called Rebecca Spencer. She was 27 years old and had two children. He took a knife from her kitchen and stabbed her 58 times. Despite investigations, the case went cold and Craig Price got away with murder. It seems like just random, doesn't it? He's just 13, he got into someone else's house and then stab, 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 walk away, got away with murder. It's so random. But moving on. On September 1st, 1989, Joan Eaton, who was 39 at the time, was stabbed with a kitchen knife. Her daughters, Jennifer, who was 10, and Melissa, who was 8, were also brutally murdered. But it would take three days for them to be found. On September 4th, 1989, Joan's mother went to check on them because she hadn't heard from them. Her other daughter went with her. When they went into the house, the interior was splattered with blood and there was a putrid smell in the air. Then they found Joan beneath blood sheets in the hallway. Jennifer was lying close, Melissa was on the kitchen floor. The police was called and they found all the victims had been stabbed multiple times. Melissa had one of the blades broken off in her neck and her skull was also bashed with a kitchen stool. Joan had 57 stab wounds and she was also bludgeoned and strangled. The community was horrified and a murderer was on the loose and people were afraid. The local police did everything they could to catch the killer. They looked into evidence, interviewed local people and they also brought in an FBI top profiler. And according to that profiler, the murderer was someone from the Eaton's neighborhood. He also said there was significant coincidence to another case which was unsolved, the Rebecca one, and in both cases the killer used a weapon from the house. There was evidence the killer had entered both houses with another goal, such as robbery. The killer was caught unaware and then he murdered the witnesses. He also believed the killer lived in the area because both crimes happened close to one another. He also mentioned robbers usually rob houses which are familiar to them. The profiler also suggested because the attacks were so frantic, the killer most likely had cut himself and people should look for someone with a cut or a bandaged hand. So, on September 5th, 1989, police detectives were driving around through a park, then one of them recognized a boy whom he had coached basketball. So he decided to stop and talk to that boy. That boy was Craig Price, who was 15 years old at the time, and while they were chatting, the detective asked if Craig had heard about the murders, and Craig responded that he did and that he had seen the bodies coming out of the house and that he lived nearby. The most interesting part about the conversation was when the detectives noticed Craig had a bandage 
on his hand. So they asked Craig what had happened and Craig claimed he had gotten drunk and had punched his hand through a car window. After the detectives left, they decided to do a follow-up on Craig's story because it seemed a little bit suspicious, especially because he had a cut on his hand and lived in the same street as the victims. The detectives found out there was no police report of a car window being smashed in the area. And when they got there, there was no glass on the street. Even though many believed the detectives were wasting time, they decided that they were going to follow up the story because they felt Craig was a little bit suspicious and a viable suspect. The police also contacted a blood analyst expert and he went to the house and analyzed the blood spatters and trails. The expert gathered a bloody sock in print and whoever left it wore a size 13 shoe. I'm going to be honest with you, the name of the expert is Dr. Henry Lee, so I think it's the same expert from the Lana Clarkson and Phil Spector case. It's the doctor who hid evidence, but Lana's case happened many years after this one. The detectives decided to question Craig and asked him and his parents to go to the police station and they went. The detectives asked Craig about the cut in his hand and Craig maintained his story that he had tried to break into a car. Then the detectives asked him to take a lie detector test and the test revealed Craig was lying about the cut in his hand. So the detectives decided to interview Craig's friends and acquaintances and learn Craig had bragged about killing Rebecca Spencer. Spencer. With this information, the detectives got a search warrant and on September 17, 1989, the police went to Craig's house. Craig, his parents and brother were there and while they were searching the shed behind the house, they found a trash bag with bloody knives, bloody clothes, gloves and other objects. Craig Price was arrested for the murders of Joan, Jennifer and Melissa. When Craig was taken into custody, he was interrogated again and his parents were present during the investigation because he was a minor. Eventually, Craig confessed to the murders. So, according to Craig, this is what happened. Craig said initially he broke into the houses to rob. Then he found an open window in the kitchen. He landed on the table when he got in, which made a lot of noise, but he kept on walking through the house to rob it. The noise woke Joan up. She walked into the kitchen and saw Craig when she turned on the light. Craig panicked and he grabbed Joan. He beat her and strangled her. Joan's screams woke Jennifer and Melissa. Melissa ran into the kitchen to call the police and Craig overpowered her. Craig tackled the girls to the floor. He grabbed some knives from the kitchen. He then stabbed Joan, Melissa and Jennifer. One of the girls bit Craig's hand and Craig bit the girl on the face. He also bit Joan. He smashed Melissa's head with a stool because she kept struggling against him. The three of them fought really hard until they died. During the attack, he cut his hand. He took the gloves off and cleaned the wounds in the bathroom. Craig covered the bodies with sheets because he felt ashamed. He then tried to clean the crime scene with towels. He picked up the knives gloves and some bloody towels and fled the scene. He didn't notice he left a trail of blood and a sock imprint. Analysis showed the blood found was Craig's and Craig wore shoes size 13. After Craig fled, he returned home and hid his bloody clothes in the attic. The detectives went there and they found them. Then. Craig confessed killing Rebecca Spencer and gave detectives details about that night. Craig's father was so shocked, he left to the men's room to vomit and he didn't go back. His mother stood by him and she was horrified. On the night he killed Joan, Jennifer and Melissa, Craig was high on weed and LSD. Joan had 57 stab wounds, Jennifer 62 and Melissa 30. Craig Price believes the crimes were racially motivated. He states he was exposed to racism as a young child 
child. He said he wanted to kill someone when a group of white adults screamed racial slurs and tried to run over him with their car when Craig was a child. I think this is his excuse, but I truly don't believe it was because of race. Because Craig was still 15 when he confessed, the law stated he wouldn't stand trial or serve time for the crimes. The only consequence was holding Craig in a training school until he was 21. And this enraged a lot of people. Craig was ordered to undergo psychological examination and therapy, but he refused. While he was at the institution, he completed his high school equivalence test and he started taking some college courses. He was planning on getting a good job after being released. Craig was rewarded for his good behavior and this sparked outrage from the public. And that led to a campaign to stop Craig's release. A bill was passed which gave the Attorney's General Office the power to commit a mentally ill person to a mental health institution or if the person posed a threat to society. On June 8, 1994, Craig was indicted to one count of simple assault and extortion for threatening a training school employee. He was going to have faced trial for that later on. On June 1994, Craig was warned he would be held in contempt of court because he wouldn't submit to psychiatric examination and therapy, which was mandatory, but he didn't budge. Then finally he did because it meant the sentence would be reduced. On October 3rd, 1994, Craig Price went on trial for simple assault and extortion. He was found guilty and sentenced to 15 years. During trial, Craig burst into a fit of rage saying people were lying to keep him locked up. I'm conflicted on this one because I think he was right when he he said they wanted to keep him locked up. But at the same time, I think he is extremely dangerous. On February 1996, he was involved in a fight and a prison guard got hit while trying to break that fight. Craig was found guilty of assault and he was sentenced to one year. On October 1998, Craig assaulted another officer. On October 1999, 2001 and July 2009, he did it again. And this, of course, added additional time to be served. On April 4th, 2017, Craig stabbed a fellow inmate. And on January 18th, 2019, he was sentenced to 25 years for that crime. Okay, so this is the case of teen serial killer Craig Price. And I am conflicted on this one because of several issues. I keep going back and forth on this one. I would like to know how Craig grew up. Where did he start committing crimes and why? His statements on the racism he went through which led him to want to kill. Was this his trigger? Was it really? Or was it an excuse for him? I think we would have known a lot more about him and the real reason for his behavior if he had done psychological examination. But I don't think he will. I feel conflicted about this case because the goal of incarceration should be rehabilitation and Craig seemed to be walking on that path but him not wanting to do therapy and treatment is a red flag. Was he faking his good behavior? I have got the impression his behavior escalated in prison because he was angry. Everything seemed to go against him and if he was white, would have he gotten those 15 years for assault? Was there racial bias on this case? I always come to the conclusion Craig Price is an extremely dangerous man, but I also think his incarceration made him more dangerous. It seemed like the system didn't have any intention of rehabilitating Craig. It's scary his first murder was just 13 years of age. And the brutality of Joan, Jennifer and Melissa's attack for me tells me that he should be out of the streets for good. What do you guys think about this case? And to end this, don't forget to subscribe, click the notification bell button. Thank you for watching. See you the next time. Stay safe.